I don't know how I'm feeling about this whole slicked back bun situation. Part of me feels very sophisticated, very put together. The other part of me feels like I look like an egg, a bald egg. But you know what, that's okay. Actually, no, that door is annoying me. Today, what is important is talking about this pile of books right here, which I am so excited to talk to you guys about. I love TikTok and YouTube at the end slash start of every month because there is just like an overload of wrap ups and it's just my favorite thing ever because you just get all these reviews, all these people's opinions and thoughts and it's just fun. I'm not gonna lie, I probably had my worst reading month that I've had in quite a long time in terms of quantity because I fell into the biggest reading slump. I haven't been in a reading slump like that in months and months and months. I actually don't even remember the last time I was in a reading slump like this. So that was a really fun time, but I'll walk you through the books that I did read and my thoughts on those and what got me into the slump and what got me out of the slump. So let's chat. I started off the month by reading the first book in the Shadow and Bone trilogy, which is called Shadow and Bone. First of all, I love this cover. I searched high and low to find this one because a lot of the ones that I've been able to find in the store have been the like TV show or like movie cover. I don't, is there a TV show for this? I actually don't know. They have like people in it and I don't really want that. I really wanted this like gold foil with the stag and this beautiful blue marble behind it. I think this is a stunning cover and I really enjoyed this. I gave it four stars. I would definitely recommend this to anyone who wants to start reading fantasy or who has just started reading fantasy but is still a little bit intimidated by maybe the more traditional or more adult fantasy novels. This is YA and I find that YA fantasy is a lot easier to understand compared to adult fantasy. As you guys know, I had never read any fantasy until I read the Folk of the Air series in January and I loved that. And so I picked up this one hoping it would give me a similar kind of feeling and it definitely was really good. I don't think I enjoyed this one quite as much as I enjoyed the Folk of the Air series, but in saying that I haven't read the next two books in this trilogy. I put myself on a bit of a book buying ban this month because it's my birthday in April and I knew that I'd be receiving a lot of books so instead of going out and buying the next two books I decided to put the next two books on my birthday list and I'm pretty sure that I will be opening those on my birthday which is very exciting and I'm really excited to have them in my bookcase because the next ones are a beautiful metallic like red and then a metallic green and I just think it's so stunning like the spines of them but it's not that important. I never know how to explain fantasy because there's so much to explain. A very, very brief summary is that there is a girl named Alina and she's living in this fantasy world. She's a soldier. I think she's a map maker in particular. I think there's a different name for that, but whatever. But she ends up going into this specific battle and finds out that she is actually magical and that she has magical powers that she never knew that she had. And yeah, she discovers that she is pretty much one of the most powerful creatures in this land and then this whole adventure ensues and she has to go to this certain place and learn all these certain things and there's a few plot twists in it. It's honestly so intriguing and so interesting and I'm really excited to see where the next two books go but I'll let you guys know what I think when I read those. I don't know when that will be because I have so many books that I want to read in April and I just don't know what my TBR is yet but I'm sure I will read them soon because I really enjoyed this. I ended up finishing this probably I think I finished this on like the 2nd or 3rd of March, so obviously very early on in March. And then I was like, I'm gonna pick up the Atlas 6 because I've heard so many people rave about this. I got this one for Christmas. I do have the original indie cover, which I am so grateful for because it is stunning. So I'm very thankful that I bought this one when I did. It was really just like luck of the draw. It just happened that this was the cover that was available to buy when I purchased it and now they've just changed it. So I really did just get lucky with this. But I decided to pick this up, heard incredible things, and there are a lot of booktubers that I specifically seem to find that I have very similar taste to who have also loved this book. I know that Hayley Pham, I'm pretty sure she said she loved this. And a lot of the time, I would say like 90% of the time, the books that she says she loves, when I pick them up, I love them too. So I was really trusting her judgment and I don't think there's anything wrong with her judgment. I think the majority of people seem to really love this book, but I don't know why. I just could not get into it. And it's really just that simple. I wish I loved it, but I just can't seem to get hooked on the storyline. There are quite a few characters. There are like six main characters. So you're following six different stories and each character is very fleshed out, which I love. They all are very different, which I love. There's this great storyline of these six people competing at this Alexandrian college society type of thing. It's a really great and intriguing premise, but for some reason, I just couldn't get myself to pick this up. Like every time I picked it up, I'd read like three pages and be like, oh, I I just can't. I even got it on my Kindle app to see if it was like 
the physical book that was the issue because sometimes I find it easier to read a book as an ebook. So I tried reading the ebook and I still couldn't get through. I got to like 47% or something like that. So almost halfway and I was just like, this is ridiculous. At this point, I think it was like halfway through March. And I was like, I have been reading this book for almost two weeks and it never takes me that long to read a novel. And honestly, it took me so long to make the decision to DNF this book because I never DNF books. But I'm also one of those people that always says to other people, if you're not enjoying a book, put it down, pick up something else. Books are meant to be enjoyed. And if you're not enjoying it, there is no point in reading it. So I don't know why it took me so long to take that advice for myself, but I decided maybe it's just not the right time for me. I think I will try and pick it up at another point in time. Because like I said, the premise of it, the concept, it all sounds so interesting to me. I love a dark academia story. I love the like fantasy, the magic. I just don't think it's my time. So we have my first DNF of the year, which I'm so sad to say, but... I did want to talk about that because that was like a huge part of my month even though it wasn't counted as one of my actual reads of the month. So after I decided to put that down I was like okay what am I going to pick up next and I decided to go back to my tried and true Taylor Jenkins read and pick up after I do which I honestly didn't think I was going to love and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I think I gave it four stars so not as good as some of the other books that I've read by her but still really really good and I flew through this I read it in like two days and I was like this is what I've been missing if you don't know what this book is about we have Lauren and Ryan who have been married for I actually can't remember I think they've been together for about 10 years I can't remember how many of those years they have been married but their marriage has just reached this breaking point they are full of resentment they're just not enjoying each other's company and they decide in order to save their marriage they will take one year off and completely go separate ways do whatever the heck they want to do just live a completely different life whatever they want to do they can do that for a year and they'll come back at the end of that year and make a decision as to whether they want to stay together or get a divorce and so we read this story from Lauren's point of view who is the wife and we get to see what she gets up to during this year of singleness and independence and honestly it was really beautiful to read almost about her growth as a person and her mindset towards things change and her be able to reflect not only on her marriage but just on who she is as a person and whether she likes that and whether she wants to change things and honestly it was more of like a contemporary fiction rather than a romance obviously it had that large romance element because that was like the basis of the plot but so much of the story is her being single and just like learning who she is and I really enjoyed it and I think it's definitely worth the read like I said it's not one of my favorite 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 TJR reads I still prefer some of her other books above this but I thoroughly enjoyed it and flew through it and has just some beautiful not life lessons but just like perspectives in it so I really like this next I finished how to win friends and influence people this is a very well known and very well loved book I think it was first published in 1936 so it has been on the bestsellers list for a wild amount of time it's crazy and honestly I think it's worth it I think this is a really great non-fiction read it's pretty much just about how as a person you can connect with others the best way possible and how that connection and how that interaction with other people can benefit you in so many ways I think this book is mainly aimed at people who want to enhance their people's skills so that they can improve their career or maybe get a promotion or just move forward in like a career point of view like in a workplace environment and so a lot of the examples that he gives are in regards to that but I think this is one of those books that everyone would benefit from reading and everyone would benefit from applying to their lives. It really gave so many tips that maybe you've thought about or you've heard in the past but if everyone applied these things the world would be a totally different place because the concepts themselves are very simple. It's things like listen to people wholeheartedly, ask them questions, ask them to elaborate, remember people's names, treat people with respect and importance and such simple simple concepts but things that we just don't really do very well as a whole as a society so I definitely recommend this obviously since it was published in 1936 it's not the most contemporary writing like the writing is not as digestible as some of our more modern non-fiction reads but I think it's so worth it it did take me a while to get through because I would just pick it up and read one chapter at a time but even if you do that it's just such a worthwhile read in my opinion I think I gave this like four or four and a half stars definitely recommend this then I decided to finally pick up 
up A Thousand Boy Kisses by Tilly Cole. This has been sitting on my bookshelf for almost a year now. I think I got it for my birthday last year. And when I put it on my birthday wish list, I didn't realize how sad everyone thought it was. I think I just heard all of the great reviews. I must have heard Steph Boa's review about it because I know it's one of her favorites. And then I received it, put it on my bookshelf. And then I feel like all I heard about it was this is going to break you. It's going to break your heart into a million pieces. It's so sad. And I was like, oh no, like now I don't want to pick this book up at all because if you guys know me, you know that I don't really enjoy reading sad books. I have to be in a very specific mood to pick up a sad book. But once I had finished my previous novel, I was like, oh, what am I in the mood for? And I picked this one up and I was like, you know what? I'm going to start it. I'm going to see how I feel and I'll kind of like base whether I want to keep reading on that. And I picked it up and I started reading and I was like, oh, this is actually really good. And it did break me and it did make me cry. And I fully sobbed. Like I was lying in bed one night near the end of the book and I was ugly crying. And Liam turned to me and he's like, are you doing okay? And I was like, no. And he was like, oh, well, what's the book about? Tell me. And I couldn't even tell him because I was crying that hard. And yes, that is so dramatic. I am such an emotional person and I'm such a crier. So I don't think everyone will cry as much as I did. I'm just, I'm just that type of person. I wish I wasn't, but it's just who I am. But I will say, if you don't like sad books, don't pick this up. I gave this four stars. I think this was like the month of four star reads, honestly. I had so many four star reads. But this is a childhood, best friends to lovers. It's a YA novel and it definitely reads very YA. I think if I had read this when I was like 15 years old, I would have been obsessed, like fully obsessed, like Fault in Our Stars obsessed because it gave me so much nostalgia of reading all of those John Green and like Jennifer Neven kind of books when I was like 15 years old because that was like the type of books that I was obsessed with along with like everyone else during that time period. But but also in saying that there were so many parts of this and I was like that is the cringiest cheesiest thing I've ever read and also so many parts of it were just extremely unrealistic but those few little criticisms did kind of like take me out of the story a little bit I couldn't like fully immerse myself in it because of those little things like I would be like fully immersed in a scene and then one of the characters would say something and I'm like why did you say that but if you love a romance full of cliches if you love childhood best friends to lovers if you love a very emotional and heartfelt read then I definitely do recommend it that's my review on a thousand boy kisses I'm glad I finally read it because I feel like it's one of those books that I have just been putting off for so long and I did enjoy it. Poppy and Rune definitely have my heart. After having my heart broken and shattered into a million pieces when I read that, I decided I needed something more fun and adventurous and maybe not like light-hearted but not like I'm gonna ugly cry in my bed at 9 p.m., you know? So I decided to pick up Divergent and I talked about this in one of my vlogs a few weeks ago now, so you might have heard me talk about it, but when this came out, I was definitely in my reading stage. I feel like it was in between the Hunger Games reading phase and the John Green reading phase, but I don't know why I never picked this up because like I said, I was obsessed with Hunger Games and I feel like this was a very similar vibe and I feel like a lot of people who love the Hunger Games ended up also reading Divergent and I just never had that phase of my life. A couple of months ago, I was walking around an op shop and I saw this and I was like, I kind of want to read that. Since then, it's been sitting on my bookshelf and when I was like, I just need something like fun and adventurous, I saw this and I was like, that's kind of perfect. So I picked it up and I, again, just flew through this. It was such a great read. It was exactly what I needed for that time, for that mood that I was in. Sometimes you just really need a good YA because like you can just consume them so quickly because they just feel so easy. You don't have to think very hard when you're reading them. I think I'm gonna save the next two books for when I just really need one of those fast paced YA books again. Like maybe if I'm in a slump or something. If you're in a slump, this is a great book. Even if you've already read it, I think it would be so fun to reread it like years later. Speaking of slumps, after I finished this one, I kind of fell into another slump. So I finished this one by like the 2nd of March, then I was reading this one till like the 15th or 16th of March, and then I read all of these within the next week, and then I fell back into another reading slump until like the 25th or 26th of March. I don't know why. I was still picking up books and I was still reading, but I wasn't like flying through anything, and during that time I decided to keep reading Love Stories by Trent Dalton, which I had started back in February, but I never finished. It is one of those books that you can kind of pick up, put down, pick up, put down, because I guess this would be considered 
considered a collection of short stories. Again, I feel like I've talked about this for quite a bit on my channel recently, so I won't harp on about it too much, but Trent Delton is a Brisbane-based author, and during 2021, he went and sat on two of our busiest streets in the Brisbane CBD in the city, and he set up a little table and chairs and his typewriter, and he had a little sign. You guys can see it at the back here. And he basically invited people to come and share their love stories, and that's exactly what people did. I think there's a photo. He met all of these beautiful people, plus many, many more, who just came and sat with him and told him their love stories, whether it was about their first love or about who they ended up marrying or whether it was a story about friendship love or family love or even like community love. Just like lots of beautiful, beautiful love stories. And this is one of those really feel good books where if you're ever just feeling maybe down in the dumps or just like a bit discouraged by the world, this is a great book to pick up. There are some sad stories in here, so I don't want to say that it's all like happily ever after stories. Like there's a lot of stories where people lost someone that they were deeply in love with or didn't get enough time with that person or lots of different stories but it's just so heartwarming to see how much love there is in the world and that it seems like everyone has a love story to share no matter what age they are no matter who they are because love can be just seen in so many different ways and I just loved it so so much I think Trent Dalton did an incredible job with this book like I just I've never read a book like it it is so unique and there is just so much heart in it and I was actually originally borrowing this from my sister-in-law she bought it and lent it to me but when I got about like halfway through this I was like I need my own copy because I want to annotate it so I went out and bought my own copy because I just needed it so I definitely recommend this this was a five-star read for me it is technically non-fiction I guess like a non-fiction collection of short stories if you can call it a collection of short stories and it be considered non-fiction but yeah I just really really enjoyed this and while I was reading this as my non-fiction I was kind of also picking up a bunch of other novels I tried to start reading Insurgent because I borrowed it out from the library and it just like wasn't really the vibe I tried starting another non-fiction and again I'm like kind of part way through that but it just wasn't the vibe and I just was in a slump again. And then I decided, you know what? I'm gonna pick up Akatar. Again, this is a book that has been sitting on my shelf for months and months. This was actually sent to me by the lovely Sophie. Why is it not focusing? There we go. She said that this series is one of her all time favorites and she did send this to me like last year. But at that time I had never read any fantasy before. Like I said, I only started reading fantasy this year. And I think that's why I put it off because I thought it was gonna be a lot more difficult to understand and I was a lot more intimidated by this series in comparison to some of the YA fantasy that I've been able to pick up. And I'd also heard a lot of people just describe this as like super spicy, very smutty, and that's just like not usually in my vibe. I honestly try to avoid books that are recommended for their spice because I love a plot heavy book and a lot of the time if it has heaps of spice it lacks in plot so I put this off for a really long time for obviously a bunch of reasons and I decided that I finally wanted to pick it up and kind of just for my own opinion I guess. I actually just finished it like this morning a couple hours ago and it was really really good like really good. I will say the second half or even like the last third of the book is significantly better and significantly more like action-packed than the first half or the first two-thirds of the book but obviously of course in a fantasy series you're gonna have to do a lot of world building a lot of introductions to the rules of the land and the creatures and all that sort of stuff so that is understandable but I will say if you're like halfway through and you're like I don't even really know what's happening just be patient stick it out to the end because there is just like so much that happens in the last like this much of the book that is just wild it almost feels like there's two different plot lines in this book if you guys didn't know which I didn't know when I started this book this is a Beauty and the Beast retelling I literally was like a third of the way through and I was like this book just feels familiar in a way and I don't really understand why and then I got a little bit further and I was like this really reminds me of Beauty and the Beast so I googled it and it turns out it's a retelling and I think every book in the Akatar series is a retelling of some kind whether it's a fairy tale or a Greek mythology retelling or anything like that so that's really exciting I really liked that I don't think I've read many retellings in my history of reading and so I really really enjoyed that aspect of it but I would say that the retelling almost like ended like two-thirds in like when there was that whole like explanation which I won't explain because I don't want to spoil anything but when they had that kind of like point in the story where she got the whole explanation of why everything was happening and why everything had happened up to that point it almost felt like there was a whole new plot that started after that point which usually I don't like it when books do that like when they have one plot and then it feels like they just like switch to a whole new plot two-thirds of the way through the book but in Akatar, it worked really, really well. I really enjoyed this. I've already gone out and bought the next book, which everyone in my DMs 
Edwards was raving to me about. Everyone's like, the first book is okay, but you've got to read the second one. Like, the second book is my favorite book of all time. You're going to love the second book. Like, I cannot tell you how many DMs I got raving about A Court of Mist and Fury. So I'm very, very, very excited to pick that one up. But it is a chunker, so I'm a little bit intimidated again. But yeah, I just can't wait to see what happens next in the series. But I feel like so many of you guys were waiting for me to read this for so long. And now that I have, I get it. I get the hype. And I'm sorry that it took me this long. And hopefully I'll be even more obsessed after I read the next book, which hopefully I'll get to in April. We'll have to wait and see, because like I said, it is a huge book and I have so many books on my TBR that I want to read in April. So we'll have to wait and see. I do definitely think this helped me get out of my slump though, because I haven't been this excited about a book or a series in like a month or two, which is obviously not that long, but it's just nice to feel like you're not in a slump anymore. So definitely recommend this if you're in a slump and you want something to really like dive into and just kind of be immersed in and I will say this book definitely wasn't that spicy I feel like there were probably like two scenes of spice but I am assuming that that does increase a lot in the next few books but I just wanted to mention that because I get a lot of questions about like spice levels in books and I always forget to talk about it there we have it I feel like I've just talked for about three hours and I always feel like that after I film book videos because I just get so excited and then I talk for like 20 minutes about one book and then I have to cut out like 17 minutes of that footage but I hope you guys enjoyed hearing about the books that I read in March like I mentioned it was just kind of a weird month for reading with all of my reading slumps and I also asked you guys on my Instagram if you were in reading slumps and so many of you guys also said that you guys were struggling with reading as well this month so I don't know what was in the air but at least we're all in this together or at least a lot of us I'm sure some of you had incredible reading months I would love to hear about your favorite book that you read in March please leave a comment down below and let me know maybe I can add it to one of my future TBRs but I love you guys so much thank you for sticking to the end if you did and I will see you in my next video very soon good bye